it's your boy back at it again. Um, hmm. So I don't know much about this video. I've had it up for a couple of days, wanting to do it on stream. Get out of here, RuneScape. Um. Is is it a good idea to cover its basis? Like, give some context. Basically, he's an absolute idiot. Uh, let's see. Yeah, sure. This will be fine. You can start How off with this. Absolute? So, just to give a bit of context, we'll watch this one first. Um, I've been following this Billy Mitchell case for a while. Um, because I, I like... I like a lot of Carl Jobs' uh, videos. He points out a lot of things in speedrunning and stuff that's, uh, like, for from cheaters and all that. Um, I believe he used to speedrun if he... and might still speedrun 007 Goldeneye. Uh, so, yeah, I think he did have some world records for that, but he mainly does these kinds of videos now, and it, they're pretty sick. Anyways, Legend. we'll watch this for legal some context, and then we'll go to his latest one. Legal battle is the <laughs> gift that just keeps on giving. And recently, things have taken an amazing turn. Oh, was this not his original? Ago, I released a video called The Dumbest Lawsuit in Video Game History. Yeah, this isn't the original. This is the original. Hello, you absolute legends. Okay. High scores are a serious business, and none take them more seriously than Billy Mitchell. Video game <laughs> Dude, player I... of the century. Multiple he times, looks Donkey absolutely disgusting, by the way. He looks... I don't Batman, normally make too much fun of people's appearances, but he looks accolades, so greasy. Mitchell has a fascination with trying to use the legal system to silence... His hair just looks claims, so gross. I may add, are incessant. The man cannot go two words without bringing up... It looks so just weirdly fake. <laughs> I don't know how... Like, how do you even get it to, like, come others. forward? So much so that this it looks greasy. appears to be producing his downfall. He is so married to the idea that he is God's gift to arcade gaming that he will threaten <laughs> legal action against anyone who makes the reasonable statement that his conquests were mostly fabricated and entrenched in lies and deception. Mitchell he seems to wear the, these kind of ties a lot, doesn't he? Like the whole patriotic tie. Mitchell didn't appreciate his cameo <clears> in my previous video, which was mostly focused on Guinness World Records. I lambasted Guinness for their shady practices and their reinstatement of records from a proven cheater, otherwise known as Billy Mitchell. Mitchell was upset by this and thought it was a good idea to begin... Okay, I was just thinking about this just now too. Like, you have to... Like, you look at him there and you see... Um... Like, he's definitely aged. He has to be 40s, 50s, right? Hang on, can I actually find out how old he is? He's 57. He's freaking 57 and he's still doing this bullshit. He's been at this for like 20 years. And he... <sighs> he is absolutely ridiculous. ...a defamation claim against me. He contacted multiple lawyers in my state, eventually finding one gullible enough to forward on a notice demanding that I take down the video, apologize, and pay him $150,000. You heard correctly, <laughs> sure. he's demanding $150,000 sure. because I briefly mentioned him in a video two weeks ago. As ludicrous as this demand is, this video isn't even about that. What we are actually going to cover is his $1 million lawsuit against Twin Galaxies for the crime oh, of claiming yeah. that two of the records they had on their database were not achieved on original arcade hardware. However, before we move on to that, I do want to address... He's probably going to cover this in a sec, but it's been proven out the ass that, uh... He was using modified uh, hardware. In fact, modified is even putting it lightly. I don't think there was even original hardware to begin with, other than the cabinet itself, like the the wood that makes up the cabinet, and maybe the screen. I don't know. But he played Donkey Kong on a Mame device that was loaded with a emulator, and played on there. Uh, and I, I think someone. I think, I'm not sure if it was Twin Galaxies or not, but 
someone opened up this cabinet and you could see it was not the original hardware in there and uh yeah it's irrefutable evidence that he at the very least if we would give him any leniency that he just wasn't using original hardware but yeah he definitely cheated though i don't care he can sue me just to let you know how outrageous he really is. I'll kick his this ass. Is a concerns notice. This He's is 57. I could probably break his bones anyways. Process, as outlined <laughs> in the Defamation Act of Queensland 2005. Before you can take someone to court, you must give them notice and provide them with an opportunity to make amends. In this notice, it outlines Mitchell's history, which is the same self-indulgent story he tells of every opportunity. I won't retell it here. The important part is the next section that outlines the defamatory statements and what they mean. Wait, now, he I've claims Pac-Man as well? Featuring Billy Mitchell, and from all of my experience, I truly believe Mitchell to be a compulsive liar. He lies constantly and everywhere, even in things that don't seem to provide any advantage. We will go into a lot of these lies later in the video, but even this concerns notice is no different. It starts he actually fine, looks like a fictional cartoon villain. Like, actually game. does. It correctly points out that I stated Ugh. that Guinness World Records were He just looks so ridiculous. I could not take him seriously. The world records of a proven cheater. It accurately outlines that I identified Billy Mitchell as said cheater and says that I planned on making a future video. But here is where the lies start to creep in as they always do. He claims that I stated that Guinness's decision was a slap in the face to all video gamers. This is provably untrue, as what I said was, Guinness's decision to reinstate Mitchell's records is a slap in the face to every gaming community that works hard to maintain records. Yeah, I fully agree. It pisses me off. claims that I stated that Guinness had falsified its records. Again, at no point did I say this, and the video is right there for people to scour through. That doesn't even make sense, as Billy is the one that falsified records. Guinness just prints that. I never made any statements alluding to Guinness believing that the records were false either. I just implied that the decision was based on right money, there. and that they should trust <laughs> That's the experts. actual autism. It goes on to lie again, saying that I stated that Guinness had been sufficiently paid off by Mitchell. What I actually said was... <laughs> Whether it's because they feel oh, more great. from Mitchell, or they were sufficiently paid off, it's obvious all that matters to them is the bottom line. I don't know what arrangements Mitchell had with Guinness, which is why I posted two hypothetical reasons for their decision. It is very telling when a party grossly misquotes another when the statements are right there and readily available to cross-check. The notice gets even more ridiculous though. It makes the claim that the video imputed that Mitchell is a proven cheater, which is correct and can be demonstrably shown, but it also claims that the video suggests that Mitchell is a criminal. I have absolutely no idea where this came from and would like to bit see far. this explained. I mean, he just record doesn't lied about a game. What do you do? It's not criminal records. This matter has nothing at all to do with criminality in any way, and it was never even so much as hinted that it was. It claims that the video imputed that Mitchell bribed Guinness to reinstate his records, but this has two problems. As per my previous point, this was never stated. It was only hinted at as the possible reason. But even if I did state definitively that Mitchell paid Guinness, this isn't a bribe, and the entire video highlighted the fact that Guinness charges exorbitant amounts of money to verify records. If morons want to pay a large fee to have Guinness verify their achievement, that's not bribery, it's just paying too much for a service. Here is the list of Mitchell's demands <laughs> for me to avoid paying a way too much One, there. the deletion of the YouTube publication which was published on or about July 25th. Two, your written undertaking never to repeat any of the allegations contained in the video about our client. Three, a written apology to our client. Four, Payment of our client's costs, which we estimate to be in the order of $1,500. 5. Payment of compensatory damages in the sum of $150,000. Needless to say, oh, these the supposed that damages simple. are absurd. I could make an easy 150 right now. Mitchell really is. I have to sounds admit, great. Though, as insane as this threat is, and even though I have multiple defenses available to combat... Do you know me I can just action, sue someone for no reason at all? Pleasant. Having I'll do it. <laughs> no, family, I won't, because that's I illegal, though. But unfortunately for Mitchell, <laughs> it's actually I am the adorable. Man of principle who <laughs> it's never actually be funny. Into backing down from an action I believe to be right. I am extremely fortunate in that I have a large army of support behind me. I can't imagine how scary it would be for those less fortunate though, which is one of the reasons Mitchell. I get it. Okay, I really get it everything. about it being scary whenever it involves like the legal system or anything like that. Um, but if you know uh, your rights, your laws, lawyer up, do it. I had to, I was doing, going to do it for uh, Bethesda. Uh, I emailed Bethesda 
told them that if they... It was got to do with the whole Fallout 76 crap. I got the power arm edition helmet still up there. And it was with the whole fraud and all that. And under New Zealand uh, consumer law, uh, they broke a lot and it just straight up became fraud. And uh, I emailed them saying, look, if you don't compensate me, I'm going to take this up legally. And... I was in the process of looking up uh, multiple agents and lawyers and trying to figure out what the best route to do is to take on a giant, you know, really extremely rich company. Well, luckily, by the time uh, I was about to do all that, they indeed uh, replied a couple of months later and caved in with no backbone and just said, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll compensate. And they compensated me, so... It's cool and all, but it also goes to show that if even you as a singular person, if you have been wronged and you can prove it, then yeah, go take it legally. You'll be fine. So that's what I'm saying. Billy Mitchell came after me because I called him a cheater just before. He can try his best. I'll lawyer up. I'll go for it. Personally, I'm not scared. <laughs> I know the, uh, my rights and the laws of my country and where I reside right now and yeah, I'll lawyer up. I'll take him on. It'll be funny. Even if we use his laws. I'll study up on them too, and I'd still know that I'll be alright. <laughs> He's just a dumbass. You can't sue someone because someone accused you of being a cheater with actual evidence of you cheating, so... Yeah, he's just a... Uh... All I'm trying to say is... Um, it can be scary, taking things up legally. Uh, but... Study up. Uh, know when you're being pushed over and don't be afraid to reach out for legal help when you go to a lawyer. Again, I'm not giving legal help. I'm saying go to someone that is a legal professional and get advice because they will know the situation and they'll be able to give you the correct course of things to do. He hinges on the lawsuit we are about to cover. Before we go Which on, I'm pretty sure it's what Carl's shout done. Out to this video sponsor, Ridge Wallets. Now, Yo, Ridge Wallet! Ridge I got me one of those as well. I actually really like them. This year. They're pretty good. Sponsors truly do keep this channel alive. Ridge make amazing wallets. They are compact, streamlined, and feel great. I've always hated those huge traditional I have to agree. wallets. I have to really, really agree on that. When I leave the house is my license. Not had a single card. issue with my wallet. So everything else is just overkill. The material is really, really, really strong and is backed by a lifetime warranty. Ridge are so confident they got some new designs too. I'm not sponsored by them, but I would like to be uh, hashtag please sponsor me. Um, they've got a new style that I actually really like. Uh, you know what? He should have his link. Yeah, it was right there. I'm a dumbass. I'm just blind. It's alright. Yeah, they've got a new style that I would love to get my hands on. It's this one with like the flakes in it. God, I would like to get my hands on. I think it's the blue one. Let's see. Yeah, it just looks sick. I would love to get my hands on this one. I just don't have money for it right now. I want to get it with the keychain as well. I think that'd be sick. Would love it. <coughs> for a 45-day money-back guarantee, and you can get 10% off one of these bad boys today by going to ridge.com slash legend or clicking the link in the description. William James Mitchell v. Twin Galaxies LLC, a $1 million lawsuit over video game high scores. What a wonderful world we live in. We will focus on this particular lawsuit as it has been actually served and responded to by Twin Galaxies, but it's not the only action Mitchell has taken. He also has a $1 million lawsuit filed against YouTuber Apollo Legend, a $1 million lawsuit against both the owner of the Donkey Kong million. Forums, and also Jeremy Young, who was the first person uh, who originally he, started the dispute. Is he expecting to Mitchell get this money? Million what is the point of these Galaxies lawsuits? In a different state, They're ridiculous amounts, and on top of that too, like, of it's too much evidence against him. He has to know that. I will very, very quickly explain. Does he believe his own lies? He's a well-known arcade player who allegedly set high-score world records in the arcade game Donkey Kong. These records were featured on the Twin Galaxy scoreboard, who is the largest high-score keeping organization. Both Mitchell and Twin Galaxies were featured heavily in the documentary The King of Kong. 
If you haven't seen this documentary, I strongly recommend that you do. While there are many historical inaccuracies, and it omits Wait, a lot about what really happened, it is a really entertaining story that definitely truthfully captures a lot of the personalities surrounding the case. The contrast between the two main players, Steve Wiebe and Billy Mitchell, is striking, and makes for a fantastic Wait, what? Narrative. In 2018, hold up, Gallag hold up, hold up. This is a, this feels like a, a bit disingenuous. What's going on here? They've already got my click, so they win, I guess, but... Donkey Kong have also probably heard of the Billy Mitchell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Defamatory statements of April Blah. One of responding patriot doctors, Dr. Stanley Scoppett, refused to see responding party after responding party appeared for an annual examination? When responding party arrived for his examination, the assistant to Dr. Scoffer informed Mitchell that Dr. Scoffer would not see him. The assistant informed responding party that Dr. Scoffer read the allegations from Twin Galaxies. Excuse me? Excuse me? Okay. This is exactly... You should watch uh, Rage Cop by the Neebs Gaming. Yeah, alright. I mean, uh, I'll give it a look in a sec. But, um, so, I used to work in the hospital as a nurse assistant, and, um, I can blatantly say right now, either A, he's freaking lying, or B, he's not going to a government-sanctioned medical facility, because <laughs> that's discrimination, and he can't do that. He had, like, the doctor just can't do that. There is only one way any of this could actually happen. Is if he was charged as a felon, has a huge criminal record, walks in without a police escort, and is, uh, got in his criminal record was saying violent. There's no way a doctor will say, I won't take you anyways. First of all, I'm not sure how much of that they can actually decline you on. And second of all, um, nah, there's just a lot wrong with that statement. Oh, there was a lot wrong with that statement. That's crazy. And with my time working in the hospital, I've never heard of something like that. Don't get me wrong, doctors are dicks. I Like, about 80% of nurses, I got along with really well. About 10% of doctors I got along with really well. There's some really good doctors, don't get me wrong, there's some good people there, but... A lot of them have a god complex, and a lot of them are just chauvinistic and annoying to be around. Um, but I do have to openly uh, defend doctors here. This either he has seen some shady doctors, or he, he is absolutely lying. Let's see what the article continues to say. It just states that the stress of the case has caused him to suffer from a hernia and arterial fibrillation. <laughs> this testimony comes as a part of the uh, disposition process as he had to respond to requests and initiation from production. The lawsuit Mitchell and Twin Galaxies is going, but the saga has been continuing for a good few years with no signs of stopping. Okay, I want to know more about this quote because th there's no context here. This is just a random quote that's... I don't know where you got it from. Reached out to Mitchell's doctor for a statement. Did you get a statement back? It's very strange. <laughs> so I stand with this doctor. <laughs> oh, that's actually funny, though. That's actually funny. That's crazy. Has removed all of I, that's records, funny as hell. Those not related to Donkey Kong. After extensive <laughs> investigation concluded that his two scores of 1,047,200 and 1,050,200 were not performed on an unmodified original Donkey Kong Arcade PCB. The PCB is the circuit board that houses the game itself, which outputs to the arcade This one, I'm assuming? 
The first thing Neebs that we need to clear up is what the lawsuit is actually for. As many people get this wrong, we'll watch it after uh, uh, the Billy Mitchell stuff. His high scores, <laughs> he would have no legal grounds to do this, as Twin Galaxies is a private organization Oops. and can host whatever high scores it chooses. It can ban whoever it wants and requires Any of them is no fine. Easy, easy. Instead, this lawsuit is specifically against the statements that Twin Galaxies made, outlining that his scores were not performed on an original Donkey Kong arcade. Mitchell claims that this statement is false and that Twin Galaxies is aware of its falsity and is lying or at least intentionally suppressing the truth. The logic coming from the Mitchell camp is as follows. We have evidence. That evidence proves Mitchell legitimately achieved his scores. Twin Galaxies will not accept this evidence. Therefore, Twin Galaxies is suppressing the truth and is knowingly making statements with reckless disregard for their falsity. The problem Excuse is me? that the evidence that Mitchell provides is for all intents and purposes meaningless and doesn't speak to the actual issues at hand. It isn't as if he doesn't provide evidence at all. In fact, the exhibits Mitchell provides amount to a 214-page document. There is a lot there to unpack, but it's almost completely irrelevant to Twin Galaxy's rationale behind their decision. The decision to ban Mitchell was based on video recordings. It's been well since I've seen this video, that's for sure. Recordings that can be analyzed and studied. I haven't seen Pixels. I should probably the watch it. Majority of the I was interested. I heard it being talked about is a while, well, and I wondered if testimonies. It. However, I would say that testimony carries no weight yeah, never at all for a number it. of reasons. The first reason is a simple one: people can lie. This is why hard data is always a what? No, that's illegal. You're not allowed to lie on the internet. It's illegal to lie. I can't, I can't believe that would happen. <laughs> but even in a hypothetical world where everyone always told the truth, eyewitness testimony would still be absolutely meaningless. The reality is that many forms of cheating simply cannot be detected with the human eye, let alone on the yeah, first viewing. Yeah, that's the this point of cheating, to, to something like make it impossible to find. In 1988, millions of people watched as Ben Johnson won gold and set a new world record in the 100 meter final at the Seoul Olympics. If you asked every single one of those witnesses, they would have all sworn that he had indeed won the race, and they wouldn't have been lying. But that doesn't mean he didn't cheat. Two days later, his gold medal was stripped, and his world record time was disqualified after a blood sample returned a positive result for steroids. If Johnson were to then collect so, uh, millions of sworn affidavits also that stating Kirby that he had won the race, that doesn't lie, help lie, his and case it's funny or speak to the true, issue. True, dude. Human eyes yeah, I just don't watch many movies voting. anymore. It can only be determined by analysis I should probably uh, fact, using specific get into watching movies to study a bit more the data though. in ways the human body cannot. When it comes to speedrunning, there have been Woo! Let's go! 16 star category as well, let's go! through advanced analysis. For example, in Super Mario 64, several players that spliced together runs were caught out after the audio yeah. and the video evidence was studied in Audacity, an audio yeah. editing software. The audio discrepancies were so minute that it is literally impossible for the human ear to detect the splices. However, they yeah. become obvious when technology is used. In the case of Mitchell, it was video analysis that was the basis for the conclusion. I forgot! There was another piece of evidence! Because... The way the game loaded up was different based on what hardware you were using. So if you weren't using the original hardware, it wouldn't load the level in the same order as, uh, yeah, as it shows here. So here's Billy's one here. This is what it is on MAME, which is an emulator, and this is the original arcade load of the game. You can already see in these stills alone, immediately. There's something off here. Something's... It's almost as if he was playing on an emulator. I... I guess it's only a allegations, I guess, but I don't know. I don't know. Kinda level gay. Was, loaded, was not reflective of an actual arcade unit, and perfectly represented what would appear if one were using emulation. Of course, levels load so quickly that you can't tell the difference when you watch the performance. It is only when going frame by yeah, frame that's that pretty the quick. Gun <laughs> yeah. Even if Mitchell's witnesses were all completely truthful, which I personally don't think is the case, it has no I mean, bearing on one of his witnesses is Todd they Rogers, to another notorious no cheater. They like a, who would believe him? The current owner of Twin Galaxy, <laughs> Jace Hall, is well aware of this fact, which is why he was not interested in hearing eyewitness testimonies. There are numerous times in Mitchell's suit where he points out that Hall did not want to accept eyewitness accounts. Mitchell attempts to paint this as intentional suppression of facts, but when you have the actual video, witnesses are no longer useful. 
<laughs> to give you an idea about how ignorant Mitchell is of this basic logic, God, I'll read a portion of his legal argument. It drives me out of the wall. He looks so Mitchell greasy. Twin galaxies at trial will have to impeach each and every witness that swore under oath that they saw Mitchell achieve the score. You know, if he did end up suing me for me calling him out as a cheater as well, I'll just straight up say, Your Honor, he's a greasy son of a bitch. He looked ugly as hell. What kind of haircut's that? And the judge will probably be like, Yep, yeah, I'm in, brother. He's guilty. <laughs> to date, Twin Galaxies has shown no indication that it will be able to do so. In fact, Twin Galaxies has not contacted any of the witnesses, and its motion does not attempt to discredit those witnesses' testimony. Thus, Twin Galaxies' case essentially rests on a conspiracy nearly as broad and untenable as the Kennedy assassination. I forgot that he's in there. I forgot. Yes, because you're cheating in the high score on the Donkey Kong game is as important as Kennedy. Sure. They can do this simply by being in proximity, and they don't even need to be experts on the game at hand. The amazing thing, though, is that his score of 1,047,200, the score featured on King of Kong, huh. the score that earned him the Guinness World Record for the first million points. Oh, uh, my one's too square. Zero witnesses, not a single. I don't one. think that would work with my one. When you weed out the human element in his case, what you're left with are interesting idea, though. theories and deceptive technical explanations that are either lies or ignorant to the point. God, does he just? Mitchell attempts oh, to argue I can't, I can't stand it, dude. In two ways. He actually like looks like a joke. He looks like an actual, actual cartoon villain. The second is claiming that the video performances aren't emulation, but are in fact produced by an original Donkey Kong board. In order to appreciate the absurdity of the claim that the videos aren't in fact of Billy Mitchell, we have to understand how we know that they are in fact his tapes. Mitchell does confirm that he provided tapes of his scores to Twin Galaxies. This is stated in Exhibit 20 of his lawsuit. Interestingly though, when his lawyer first contacted Twin Galaxies requesting they retract their statements, he provided an evidence package expressly stating that he never submitted videotapes of his scores. But he eventually had to ditch that argument when the evidence started stacking up. There was even posters that Twin Galaxies made at the time promoting his world record, saying that it was verified through videotape. Walter Day, the previous owner of Twin Galaxies, sent copies of Mitchell's submission of his 1,047,000 score to various... <laughs> Why does he look like a crack addict from the, from the exclusion the zone? He looks like he's about to go get some artifacts out of the exclusion zone. What? <laughs> he's even got his guitar and everything. He's just missing a gas mask now. <laughs> and give him an, a uh, Kalashnikov and some salami and he's good to go, dude. Has contacted multiple <laughs> ex-referees to ask for copies of the performance. One copy came from Dwayne Richards, who has been publicly outspoken against Mitchell. Mitchell claims that Richards must have edited the videotape in order to frame him. He actually <laughs> wants you to believe that Dwayne Richards perfectly edited the transition screen for each level he to make edited it look the like tape. it was performed right. on main. This ends up being a pretty funny Okay, what? <laughs> Hold up, hold up, so we're at 1550? I want to see quickly. I want to see. Yeah, here it is here. It so, is as you can see here, it's clearly a camera pointed at the screen. You can tell by the saturation of the colors being, like, brighter the color, the more blurrier it is. So you can see with these barrels here, or whatever these icons are, how they're just bleeding, like they're just white because of how bright they are. So it is clear that it's uh, that it's just a camera pointed at a screen. So you're telling me, <laughs> you're telling me then that they doctored a footage and made it look exactly like this 2000, uh, 2001 camera footage to look like a main build. D that sounds like it'll be a bit of a headache to <laughs> recreate. <laughs> you can even see here too, along the sides, it uh, melting off into the corner because of the way the screen is angled. That way, it refracts it a bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, and then on top of it, too, if they were to do that, they would have to set the camera up again in the exact same way. No, I'm sorry, dude. That's a. 
It's a bit of a, a bit of a reach. A bit of a reach. Richard, I feel like he'll uh, give me a quiz to get a broken level, gun. <laughs> like this ends up being a oh, that's so true, though. Even when you don't consider how ludicrous <laughs> so the technical true. feat would have been, Dwayne Richards wasn't the only source of the taped performance that Twin Galaxies got a hold of. It also got hold of a copy from Richie Knuckles, who is actually one of Mitchell's friends. He sent the footage mm. to Jace in order to clear Mitchell's name, believing him to be... Because there won't be any bias there at all, huh? in fact have a copy of the original submission. Needless to say, <laughs> both copies from the two different sources matched up perfectly. But not only did they match each other, they also matched other footage as well. In the King of Kong documentary, Billy's score was played was a on weird. a TV at Funspot. The gameplay footage shown... Again, exactly just the uh, that to go over the same points I was talking about before... Again, you can tell that it's a camera pointing at a screen. Not only can you see the whole screen, which obvi it's obvious we're pointing at a screen here, but you can still see the colors here bleeding because of, the, of it. So the effect of these old screens, um, like the way a camera sees the screen is not how our human eye sees it. And you will see lines across the screen um, flickering and even in this case, uh, bleeding of colors. Um, and I can do the same thing here. I, I can't be bothered clearing out a thing and plugging in my N64 t directly to the TV to show you. But it's the same thing there, where if I were to point this camera, which is a 1080p camera, and point it there, it doesn't matter how clear my camera is, it's still going to appear very similar to this. Um, so yeah, that's what you can look out for. However, See, there's the line work that I was talking about there. Because the footage shown in the documentary didn't show any transition screens, you can't confirm those weren't edited later. Well, luckily, we have more footage, this time from 2006. <coughs> Damn, he looks like a specimen and a half. In an interview with MTV, <laughs> so I'm really attacking people's characters tonight. At the time, Robert Merchek <laughs> played footage from a copy of the performance that Billy had sent him. Not only does this footage match all of the copies obtained for the investigation and the footage shown in The King of Kong, but it also shows a transition screen, which perfectly matches what you would see if you were using emulation. But mm. Billy Mitchell still claims the footage on the tape is not him. This is Bill Mitchell, the world's greatest Donkey Kong player, at 1,044,100, and he is in screen 116, and his score is now going to be 1,047,200 when the bonus is added. And at this point, you're going to see the kill screen in Donkey Kong. The game has an absolute conclusion level 22-1. Notice the timer is back to 4,000 points. It started at 4,000. And Mario, who's over be here, be here switching my No worries, dude. And no worries, man. The timer we chill. Like 300 points. That's the kill screen. The most you could possibly do in this game is get from here up to about that ladder before you die. Um, <clears> no one can get past this point. So, Billy, not only has he gotten to this point, he did so on his third life. So, um... He could have made some extra points by intentionally killing himself off earlier and squeaking out a few extra points on the other board. Here's the initial phase. Could? Um, what do you mean, could? He still has a world record of 1,047,000. Oh, I see, I, I uh, see. Ever-present USA logon, and there you have it. The world record I was wondering, like, what do you mean, could? It should be all the evidence on the tape. I just want back if he would want you to, believe to do it again. Everyone sees is I hope. Him. <laughs> but he also wants you to know that even if it were him, it's still legitimate footage that could have come from an original Donkey Kong PCB. Mitchell and numerous mm -hmm. technical experts spent a huge amount of time researching ways a standard arcade board could produce the images seen. <gasps> oh my tape. goodness! Oh, okay, yeah, I'm seeing things. I'm seeing things. Unfortunately, he was not able to do so, and still hasn't provided any technical explanation as to how to produce the same transition screen images that were present in his performances. The important thing to understand is that it was never the goal of Twin Galaxies to determine precisely what method Mitchell used to create these tapes. The only relevant question is whether or not what we can see can be replicated using an original Donkey Kong board, and the answer mm -hmm. is no. Mitchell no. cannot explain how these images happened the way that they did, but he does try to debunk a couple of issues that were ironed out during the investigation. One of them is the so-called girder finger. This is a small part of the girder that hasn't been fully drawn during the transition screen on emulator. This doesn't right. appear during transition screens on an actual arcade, as they render completely differently. A critical thing to realize, though, is that this girder finger is not the problem with Billy's tapes. 
The problem is the entire transition screen. Everything about it renders mm. in a different way, ignoring yeah. everything else and focusing on this Goethe finger alone. A tiny portion a bit of a single frame of footage isn't relevant. In any case, yeah. during the investigation, it was uncovered that this Goethe finger was not appearing on transition screens using the versions of MAME that were available in 2004. Keep in mind that everything else matched the videotapes and was still different to Arcade, but Mitchell's team <laughs> jumped on this one discrepancy and claimed that it exonerated him. It was quickly realized, though, that the Goethe finger only fails to draw using the default settings of the emulator. If the refresh rate is changed from 60Hz to 60.6Hz, which is the actual refresh rate of Donkey Kong, Hey, Abandoned, thank you for the, the fat follow, my friend, dude. Where's Copeland, and welcome to the, the Misha family. Hope you enjoy your time, time with us, dude. Stated. By enabling cheats and setting the refresh rate to 60.6 frames per second, the arcade machine's rate, instead of MAME's default 60 FPS, the Goethe tail draws every time. According to Mitchell, mm. Copeland is lying about the refresh rate of Donkey Kong <coughs> and is using an arbitrary setting to try to force the Goethe finger to appear. This is quite a damning claim. Never this mind, I'm gonna stay on my phone. My Twitch evidence. ain't on my phone. Oh, dude, world, I'm sorry, man. Well known that Donkey Kong does in Pain fact in the butt. Run at uh, no, exactly how it feels. I lost my last Switch account because of that. Taking place years before this entire debacle, stating that the game runs at 60.6. For example, a post from 2009 reads. Ever since I upgraded to MAME version 132, I have noticed a lot of sound starters in games that never had them before. Donkey Kong and Star Wars are definite offenders. You rebel scum replied, One of two issues <laughs> could be your cause. A. You're running at 60 Hz, and the game ran at faster. And after 0.106, MAME's sound was more affected by the screen's refresh rate. Both Donkey Kong and Star Wars run at 60.6 uh, In 2013, okay. one forum user posted a topic titled... See, that's crazy, like, um, how minute uh, the way a game runs at a different hertz. So, hertz and refresh rate are the same, but different. Uh, they uh, impact each other. But for this argument, we're not going to worry about frames. So, hertz is the refresh rate of your screen itself. Every screen has a different number of hertz. For example, my main monitor here is at 240Hz, allows me to see 240fps. So all that means is that the um, per uh, split second, it refreshes 240 times. Standard TVs, like the, the uh, box TVs and all that, they refresh at 60Hz. However, there's a difference that I have to be aware of. Because here in New Zealand, we're on the PAL system, and our TVs don't run at 60 hertz. They run at 59.5 or 0.9 hertz. And on top of that, too, most of our games actually run at 30 hertz. So, PAL games are a bit funny, especially on uh, classic consoles. For example, if I were to go grab my, uh, my Nintendo 64 from when I was a kid, that's a PAL 64, right? Is there any way to show that? It doesn't show it. I don't think. It'll probably take a while to find it, but... Yeah, so this N64 runs at about 30 something hertz, which means my games run at 30 FPS most of the time. So when I had to buy a Japanese console and hook a Japanese console up to my TV, there was a bit of an issue because that runs at 60 hertz and my TV does not, and I had to do some uh, some finicking around with a display uh, capture card to make sure that it looked decent on my screen and it was just a weird thing that I had to be aware of so it's funny how just small things like a Hertz being a 0.6 off change how the game physically loads and looks on your screen it's crazy some refresh rates no tearing they stated I just wanted to write about my MAME setup that works without screen tearing and hopefully minimal lag for God, some I games. hate in screen the post, tearing he outlines the games he uses and their refresh rates Donkey Kong is listed as 60.6 Hertz. 
It is almost universally known among retro gamers that running a game at a different frame rate than what was intended can cause issues. This is mm -hmm. why when using emulation, you often need to know the exact technical specifications of the game to run it properly. But eh, not, not really. I won't go that far. Internet. Emulators are pretty good at compensating for it these days. I don't really think about Hertz when it comes to emulators, but MAME could be different. I've asked numerous experts who all confirmed that based on what's provided in the official documentation, we can calculate the refresh rate to be 60.6 Hertz. But again, let's not trust experts and the official documentation. We can literally no, 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 no. The output of a they don't know what they're talking about. It's all shit. And a skilloscope <laughs> to get the exact refresh rate. Spoiler alert, it is in fact 60.6 Hz. Billy Mitchell True. claims the refresh rate is not 60.6 Hz, but rather 60 Hz. And his evidence for this is amazing. He provides the specifications for the monitor used in Donkey Kong arcade cabinets, the Sanyo Easy 20. He doesn't understand the difference between the scan rate on a monitor and the vertical refresh rate yeah. created by the game itself. This is a pretty epic blunder to be included in a legal document. We already know that Mitchell has a team of technical experts working around the clock to find ways to justify his footage, so I can't believe this is a simple mistake. I'd guess, as with everything else, this is intentional deception. In their evidence exhibits, they also include a frame from a video appearing to show a Goethe finger. Their argument is that this frame proves that the Goethe finger can occur on an original Sus. arcade. But this frame isn't from a transition screen, which are the issue with Billy's tapes. This frame is from the game's loading screen before the gameplay even begins. If the tapes what? aren't from Mitchell, why is he trying so desperately to prove that the footage could have been produced on an original arcade? He has always stated that the tapes weren't his, so why does he focus on the footage at all? It makes no logical sense. Billy has even already admitted that the footage is MAME. And the fact of the matter is, Damn, he's staring him down hard. Film, <laughs> and everybody is questioning the fact, was it arcade or was it MAME? What is MAME exactly for those who may not know? Okay, I've never even played MAME. I don't have MAME loaded. Oh, bullshit! Home, you... But basically MAME is an emulation of what is in the arcade. It's just not the arcade. Therefore, it's a different platform. There are main world records. Mm -hmm. There is Donkey Kong main world records. <laughs> what was the point okay. of that? And the film footage that he has... <laughs> just randomly Jack plays notes on this keyboard? Play. Main. Now, I contend that if he gets the original tape, or he gets the original room shot, he will see that what I say is true. I'm not disputing what he says, what I'm disputing is the fact that I want him to have the original tape. Okay. So you this did play a main then. Gone on pretty long, and honestly, we've addressed most of what Mitchell's evidence has to offer. As I previously mentioned, most of his arguments relies on unreliable witness testimony and the technical is he aspects stupid or of just his case. Um, um, yes. Now, nah, um, he has like it, he's just a pathological liar. Like, there is no reason for him. Like, he's 57 years old. And he's been fighting this um, legally for 24 years so far. Almost half of his life has been wasted over a stupid high score that no one actually cares about. And also it was cheated. Like, all the evidence is against him. Against him, sorry, if I can speak like a normal human. Um, the evidence is against him. Uh, he's suing everyone he possibly can hell well, i'm at risk if he sees this video of him suing me because i said he cheated and he did cheat because he's a cheating bastard um and he he's ruining the uh whole sport of speed running high scores and stuff you know saying that is a community building thing and has a lot of trust involved and a lot of people cheat and ruin that special uh, trusting community building that these games build for us and he thinks he can just sue everyone over it and it's not like he can even win however let it be whether it was cheated or not like because you're you're a normal person <laughs> if I was called out for cheating on saying I bet all right you got me I'm out I'm sorry 
probably won't be able to ever submit anything again, so yeah, that's my career over. <laughs> like, you can't do anything. Like, the more you fight it, the more you look stupid. And especially for Billy Mitchell is that he's really good at disproving himself. Like, he's his biggest adversary. Like, he will say one thing, and then he will give evidence that disproves everything, and it's just ridiculous. But what's funny is that even the courts see him as a joke. Every, like, most of his, um, uh, suing, uh, I'm not a lawyer, you can tell. But most of his cases, that's the word I'm looking for, <laughs> most of his cases don't even make it past litigation. Like, they, they look at it and they're like, yeah, no, see ya. And they just toss his papers in the bin. They don't even give him any any chance to fight it. But, again, when it comes to Twin Galaxies, that's made it past litigation. He's taking them to court. And he's taking Carl Jobs to court for calling him a cheater. And Carl Jobs is going through with it, luckily. Um, which I think is a great thing. But, yeah. Even in this case, like, he has no hope in winning. And the court knows he has no hope in winning. There is nothing, there is no evidence on his side at all. All of his evidence isn't even evidence. It's very, uh, if we were to borrow a very funny quote from the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial, <laughs> it's all hearsay. <laughs> ...are at best ignorant and at worst deceptive and slanderous. He also complains heavily that people don't like him. This is an attempt to show malice and create doubt that any evidence they bring forth is legitimate. One thing I've noticed about narcissists is that they always find excuses for why people don't like them. It is never because of their actions. They will claim it's because it, people it's probably want is here. To this hair is pretty they have already gross, made up just their saying. mind and nothing will ever change that. Mitchell claims that Twin Galaxies weren't interested in being shown the truth and were always against Mitchell. But the reality mm -hmm. is that Twin Galaxies spent an insane amount of time and energy trying to help Mitchell validate his footage. They bought recording equipment, did extensive testing on actual hardware, and even extended the length of the investigation because Mitchell requested it. It took more than seven months for a verdict to be made, and the entire time, everyone was waiting for Mitchell to submit evidence that shows why his footage looks the way that it does, but the evidence never came. As someone who is involved in the speedrunning community, I can tell you that our perception of the investigation was completely different to what Mitchell... Oh, was absolutely. Perfect. Speedrunners were furious and shocked at how long this investigation yeah, I'm pissed. was on, given the fact that clear evidence had been given. In both of the Todd Rogers and Billy Mitchell disputes, many people declared that Twin Galaxies owner Jace Hall was being intentionally aloof and combative. At the end of the day, I believe this all came down to impatience. People wanted Billy gone as soon as the evidence came out, and they probably weren't wrong, but Twin Galaxies wanted to give him time to defend himself. It's just that he never did. I know Twin Galaxies has a pretty messed up past, but we really need to support them now. The Twin mm. Galaxies of today is not the same as it once was. It, it's, I have spoken to I won't make an a opinion on that. It's he definitely very, seems very like he hard. does care about gaming and wants to celebrate the highest levels of achievement. Their removal of the old mm. guard and players like Todd Rogers and Billy Mitchell just I don't think he does. I think he just likes the integrity. attention it really more than anything. Like a different place. And this is coming from he someone feels who made important. entire videos about how corrupt it was. But possibly more importantly is that Twin Galaxies is fighting the fight for every time to community <laughs> to defend himself for 20 years later. <laughs> yeah. If Twin Galaxies loses, <laughs> it would be an incredibly damaging precedent to set. Mitchell would go on to serve all of his currently filed lawsuits, and you better believe he would file more. Defeating Mitchell would benefit everyone, and losing would be oh, disastrous. Absolutely. Now is the time. There's to no together. way anyone would lose Thank to him. Thank you so much for watching. Now, if you're wondering too, uh, Billy Mitchell was actually made fun of by the regular show, so I'll give you a show that, but it's funny. <laughs> Remember that episode of Regular Show where Mordecai and Rigby challenged a floating head to beat his world record? Well, did you know that that floating head is heavily inspired by real-life loser, I mean, video game world <laughs> record holder, Billy Mitchell? Well, he tried to sue Cartoon Network because, according to him, they use his likeness without permission. Billy is yeah, we're doing Rage Cop after the Billy Mitchell stuff, don't worry. multiple world records on classic video games, as well as being the first person to achieve a perfect score on Pac-Man. He has also appeared on the documentary The King of Kong, as well as being a hot sauce seller. Well, you would please oh this yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot. Show, directly to the lawsuit. Luckily, a judge dismissed the case since they ruled that Billy Mitchell is in fact not a floating head that explodes when he loses. <laughs>
and therefore <laughs> his appearance in the show was protected by free speech laws. Funnily enough, years later, Billy's world records were contested after it was discovered that he may have cheated to obtain his world record. Oh, he did cheat. You don't need to use the word may have. Don't need to use Hello, that. Hello, you absolute legends. All right, so now we can watch the video, the, the, the video I was trying to get to. Mitchell sued Twin Galaxies for defamation after they removed his high scores from their database and said he didn't achieve them on original hardware. For almost four years, Years, this lawsuit has dragged on, and thankfully for everyone involved, it looks like it should be wrapping up and going to trial sometime Woo! this year. Let's go! I hope they get a public so cam. Has been sent to I want to watch this go down. Tapes if they get a public cam, I'll stream it. Scores. And it's been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that the gameplay seen on these videotapes cannot come from an original Donkey Kong arcade. Instead, that they must have come from an emulator. Billy Mitchell seems to have lied and said he played on an arcade machine when he in fact didn't. And this opens up the possibility for cheating in numerous ways. In his lawsuit against Twin Galaxies, Billy claims these videotapes don't matter because he achieved the scores live and he has witnesses. How is it possible that he performed them at a live event in front of hundreds of people if he faked it and actually played on an emulator? The videotapes must be fake or are not his actual gameplay or should just be ignored because he has real people that say he really did it and they saw it happen so it must be legit. As Billy said in his lawsuit, if everyone is lying it must be a conspiracy akin to that of the Kennedy assassination. But here's so the problem. Stupid. The videotapes were the How only can you tangible think evidence so much yourself that ever happened. So that's all uh, anyone had to go off. Aside from the tapes, you equate it was yourself just to the same happened, value as a president. Really like, what the hell? There was dude? no footage of Billy actually playing. There was nothing to indicate that he was even there or that he played at all. That is, until now. For the first time in 15 years, photos of Billy Mitchell at one of these events where he claims to have achieved one of his world records have surfaced. And I'm not going to beat around the bush. These photos absolutely destroy Billy's case. He oh. is done. There is no <coughs> Let's more go, doubt dude. Billy will lose his lawsuit. These Woo! photos do more Let's damage go! than anything that has come before Suck him, it! <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating. Even if you disregard all of the videotape evidence, what the hell's up with this tie would still be disqualified and he would still be banned he, for life. That's all he wears, by the way. It's just patriotic tires. So how is that even possible? Let's find out. I really hope you enjoy. Now, Legends, I am super excited because this video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon yeah! is a high-protein, zero-sugar cereal that just might be the greatest thing humans have ever invented. I absolutely love cereal. I could easily smash an entire box. Same, dude. But generally, cereal has very high sugar and low protein. It's just not ideal for someone like me who wants to lose fat and build muscle. When Magic Spoon wanted to sponsor me, I was very skeptical. I am a cereal connoisseur. This is my <laughs> ballpark but I was very impressed <laughs> with how good it is. I can easily fit Magic Spoon into my diet because of its macronutrient profile, but it honestly feels like I'm cheating. Damn, he kind of buff though. It tastes. Personally, He's my got some nice arms. Fruity, and I eat Wish I had arms bed. like that. This Mine are all scrawny my and throughout the entire day yucky. Because I really have something to look forward to. For those looking to improve their body composition or just want a cereal with more natural ingredients, I cannot recommend Magic Spoon enough. And if you click the link in the description or use the promo code LEGEND, you will get $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon are so confident, they provide a 100% money back guarantee if you are not happy. Again, you can scan the QR code, use the code LEGEND, or go to magicspoon.com slash legend to get $5 off today. <laughs> when Twin Galaxies banned Billy Mitchell in 2018, they did so because of videotapes showing two scores. The first is a oh. 1.047 yeah. million point score Billy achieved in 2004, known as the King of Kong score. It's called this because this score is featured in the King of Kong documentary. The second is a 1.05 million point score Billy achieved in 2007, which is known as the Mortgage Brokers score. This is because he supposedly All achieved right, this yeah. as a mortgage brokers convention. The it's video so tapes for both of these scores that, show footage that isn't legitimate. Down. This is a fact and it's why he was banned. But aside from that, there was no other evidence that Billy even played the game, aside from a few people saying it happened. 
Well, to be completely fair, the King of Kong score actually does have zero witnesses. It's the Mortgage Broker score that Billy has a few witnesses for. Did he and never play the game? Mortgage Broker Excuse score me? That we now have photos That's for. That's even worse. So let's take a deeper look into this. Of course, as the tape shows <laughs> the score wasn't done on an original arcade, we'd assume he didn't actually get the score at the event. But for a moment, let's forget all about the videotape and humor Billy's argument that the tapes don't matter. In his lawsuit against Twin Galaxies, Billy submitted five witness statements saying they were at the event when the score happened. Two of these statements are from people who worked at the convention. They just say they were there when it happened, but they don't say they actually saw him get it, and they aren't even Donkey Kong Great players, witnesses so they have there, no dude. idea what's going on anyway. We all know that Billy likes to lie in public as he recently showed, so a random person thinking a score happened when it really didn't doesn't mean much. So we can disregard those two statements. This leaves three witnesses that say they directly saw him get the world record. The first is from a guy called Richard Malian. He says he watched Billy's score reach beyond 1 million points and that he saw him achieve his targeted score. Richard is actually a childhood friend of Billy's. In fact, he appeared yes, opposite Billy be... in the school Damn, yearbook. Damn, even but when he was in school, he looked him. gross. While it is common for friends to lie for each other, let's not assume that's what happened. Now, when I'm deciding whether or not someone is trustworthy, what I do is create two columns. One for yes, I should trust them, and one for no, I should not. Then I put things into each column and weigh them up at the end. Right. So first, okay. I can see that Richard dresses really well. He has a nice suit and he has <laughs> no, a nice watch. No, he does no, not. He... You joking me, dude? He dresses like a freaking Yakuza. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's literally the getup I wear. <laughs> dresses this well could lie. So I'm going to put yeah, that into the yes He doesn't column. have his top button done no up, no tie. The I found out about Richard that really concerns His color coordination's off. The super tiny detail of him pleading guilty to conspiracy, that's a freaking Yakuza fraud, outfit. money laundering, and criminal contempt uh, that, in yeah, 1996. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That would do it. <laughs> yeah, operation. that sounds about right. I mean, it's probably <laughs> nothing, but it would be remiss of me if I didn't include it. Back to right, the yes right, column, right. Richard just seems like a super friendly and nice guy. I mean, no one who looks this happy could lie. So this has to go into the yes sure. column. Now, looking at the no column, I'm going to be super nitpicky here and include this other small thing. And look, maybe this is being too judgmental. Ew, what but is I'm that color? Go Yucky. The fact that he was charged again nice with fraud mess. in 2019 by the SEC and had to pay back $750,000. It's probably not even worth bringing up, but again, I just want to be fully transparent. <laughs> However, I must say that Richard has some really good motivational quotes on his Twitter feed. I mean, look oh, at these true. quotes. They that are truly does the inspirational. Now. And he puts his yeah, name in bigger text than the I person who actually said the quote. So when you think about it, who said the quote really? I'm going to have to put this into the yes column. Now, I should probably leave it there. And at this point, I really am not being fair to Richard. But I'll just add one more thing and I'll let you decide. In 2021, Richard was unfortunately Damn. arrested for conspiracy to commit fraud. He looks Look, like he a just thumb not right there. When it comes to fraud. He keeps getting caught. <laughs> I, for one, do not hold this against him. When I look at this table, I see three to three. It's pretty even. Personally, I'm leaning towards trusting the guy. But you yeah, I think I trust him too. What you think? Okay, so Billy's first witness is a bit <laughs> sketch. Who's number two? Billy's second witness that says he saw him get it is Todd Rogers. Oh boy, this is not going well. Okay, <laughs> hit me with number three. Surely we're going to get a winner. The yeah, we don't need to even talk about Todd Billy Rogers. The score He's pretty notorious for Mahoney, lying. Who is also Todd Rogers' girlfriend. I'm going to be uh, completely true. honest here. I'm getting the impression that Billy's witnesses may not be entirely trustworthy. Anyway, <laughs> let's take a look at these new photos. Remember, this is the first time we've seen any footage of Billy. See, at the that's a nice suit. That's how you do it. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't fit too well, like color wise. But we can see that he's gone with a brighter blue with a C uh, overtone to the blue. But then he's tied it together with this neon color tie with a black suit. Now I wouldn't go with a black suit. To be fair, with this color coordination, black suits are very hard to um, adapt to all cases. Um, but it works here. It gets the job done. If you were to do a, if you were to pick a color, I would probably stick to a, probably a cream white suit. You could even do a, a, a deep purple, um, brown suit even. But yeah, it's 
black suits you restrict your a lot what you can do. You then, can. Yes. So there's Billy and Todd. But that's the difference. And Billy is talking to He's some actually dude, well put and together this time. like the Donkey Kong cabinet behind Billy. It's got a VCR on top, which is how they recorded the score. It all looks pretty legit right. so far. There's Billy and Todd posing with a couple of people. There's a camera that was recording Billy play, even though that footage doesn't seem to exist. Yeah, I want the footage, reason. please. Here's Give me Billy the footage. And Todd posing again with the thumbs up. Maybe this is just after Billy got the world record. I have to admit, everything here looks pretty legit. And oh my god, what is that? That's what I was thinking. Is he going to point out... That joystick is not mm. an original Donkey Kong joystick. This arcade machine the original does is not Chody, have isn't it? original unmodified Donkey Kong arcade hardware. This is an original Donkey yeah, Kong that's stick. What I thought. It's, it's got Chody. a big black ball and a short column. The stick on Billy's arcade is a tall stick with a smaller ball. Maybe he's compensating and it's obviously for red, that. So the stick has been changed to something else. <laughs> on top of that, it appears to be an eight-way stick. Now, the original oh? Donkey Kong stick How do you is know four if it's eight way, way which not? means it can only go up, down, left, and right. But an eight-way stick, like the one you would find on all modern arcades, can also go diagonally. When it comes to Donkey Kong, an eight-way stick fundamentally yeah, see changes the, the way the game can be played. If you want to steer barrels while on a ladder, you have to stop and hold left or right, because you can't mm. go up and to the side at the same time. But with an eight-way stick, you can continue to climb ladders while steering barrels by using the diagonals. With an eight-way stick, you can do things you can't do on an original arcade, which is why right. they are banned. So not yeah, only that makes is sense. That's just original, controller modification totally at that point. Banned, it looks Completely like banned from speedrunning in general. Which is extra banned. And not only would Billy's world record still not count because of the not modified just don't stick, count. but Billy would still also be banned for lying about it. And oh boy, did he lie about it. His entire lawsuit God, against the Galaxy is though. based on the premise that he played on unmodified original arcade hardware, which is categorically not true. Not only from the videotapes, but now from the photos as well. And his lawsuit is full of lies where Billy claimed the hardware was unmodified. And not just Billy, the referees who adjudicated the score lied as well. Todd Rogers and yeah, his doesn't girlfriend me. Kim Mahoney both say in their sworn statements that Billy played on unmodified hardware. Everyone just got caught out, big time. <clears> and it gets even worse, because these photos don't just affect the Mortgage Brokers score world record. They also affect the King of Kong score as well. This is Robert Childs, who is also a longtime <laughs> friend of Billy Mitchell. For those with a very good memory, this is the same guy that was in the infamous fake board swap video. He has been True. lying on behalf of Billy for years. He is part of the con artist clique. Robert Childs runs Arcade Game Sales, which is an arcade retailer in Florida. Arcade Game Sales is important because this is where Billy claims he achieved the King God of he Kong does World Record sales. on an arcade cabinet provided by Robert Childs. Now, as part of his case, Billy Mitchell also <coughs> submitted a sworn statement from Robert Childs. And Robert states in 2003, he helped Billy by providing an arcade machine. He swore that this was an original Donkey Kong arcade machine. He says the same machine was used when Billy got his King of Kong score in 2004. And says the same machine was used again in 2007 at the Mortgage Brokers Convention. This means that not only is the Mortgage Brokers score disqualified because it was a modified machine, but because Robert Child swears it was the same machine used in 2004, the King of Kong score is disqualified as well. Billy Mitchell, Todd Rogers, Kim Mahoney, and Robert Childs were all lying about the arcade machine <laughs> that was supposed to be used. They all so weird. And now it's proven. You may be wondering why Billy would lie about something that can so obviously be disproven. And the answer is that <coughs> Billy didn't know these photos existed. In fact, the entire what? Donkey Kong community but he was posing. Know these photos existed. They were only made public recently, and not by Billy Mitchell. These photos mm. were never made public, and they were only retrieved now by directly contacting the organizers of the convention, which luckily <laughs> Wait, still what? had them. I cannot stress enough how damning these photos are. Even if you were to disregard every single thing that has ever been said about Billy being a cheater up until this point, based solely on these photos, Billy would still lose his he lawsuit against drunk, Twin like, Galaxy. All the time. His records would still be removed, and he would still be banned. 
because these photos show his records are not legitimate. I cannot wait until this goes to trial, and you best believe that. Oh, when it's it gonna dies, be great! Going it's gonna be so I'm beautiful. I'm excited, and I think you should be Please too. Please tell me this is gonna be a public cam. A lot of fun, as always. I would thank love you so to much watch for that. Watching, you that shit would be hilarious to watch. I would like to just see him squirm in his chair as all this evidence just gets thrown on him, and then just his face just completely drained of blood when the judge says, yeah, he's a cheating, lying asshole. <laughs>